what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about maxine in this video here today so this is a spoiler free review for maxine directed and written by ty west the conclusion or the supposed conclusion final chapter to the x saga this movie again is revolving around maxine minx where in 1980s hollywood adult film star and aspiring actress maxine minx finally gets her big break but as a mysterious killer stalks the starlets of hollywood a trail of blood threatens to reveal her sinister past this film of course is starring mia goth kevin bacon lily collins giancarlo esposito elizabeth debicki uh and several others now maxine i would say isn't the strongest entry of the x saga it's unfortunately the weakest i will also say that i did like the movie but it is the weakest it's disappointing in a lot of ways because of how i've hyped the project up honestly and just because of some things i know about the project but it did conclude the maxine mink story in an adequate fashion despite its shortcomings it is as of now the best slasher whodunit movie of 2024 and hear me when i say this well hear me well that doesn't mean that the film is great because it isn't but we've had worse although i can see the slasher part definitely being dethroned later this year by terrifier 3 now that i've actually seen the finished product that is maxine now as someone who again has hyped the project up for months based on it having enough to be great Maxine is the best example this year that demonstrates what I love to preach, and that is that execution is everything. Maxine simply did not become the great third film that it should have been, and that's fine. Maxine Mix is living in Hollywood. It's 1985. She's landed this role as Veronica in this film titled The Puritan 2, written and directed by Elizabeth Bender, who admires Maxine's aura. Satanic practices are on the rise, and Hollywood is catching flack because of the subject matter in its films. The Night Stalker is also on the loose. Still working in X content, Maxine's just hoping to expand her star power by doing real movies, as she puts it. She has a close friend, Leon, who worked at a, who works at a video store. Her only real friend present in the movie, I might add, which says a lot about her current mindset. Only problem is the events from X, the Texas porn star massacre, come back to bite her. Wes's screenplay lacks heavily in terms of character development, since our supporting cast are underutilized across the board. It's heavily carried by Maxine, which is expected, but X and Pearl make much better use of its supporting cast in the sense that they all feel important to the story, whereas Maxine's supporting cast of characters feel like they were written in just so Maxine could have conversations for 90 minutes. Given that this is a whodunit, it's only right that I peel back how that aspect is handled, and it brings me no joy to say that it's pretty piss poor. From the opening scene to the reveal itself, Maxine did nothing to raise suspects. It kept the light on one person and reveals them as you'd expect them to. The reveal makes sense, don't get me wrong, but the journey to it is dull and hollow. The motive itself, very timely, says a lot about a lot of people's current mentality as it pertains to the entertainment industry and those of you who like to overly use the word woke. Even though it's in the past, I know some people who go out and watch this film will probably feel heard when it comes to that motive. And like I stated, I would have loved to see this motive in a seventh screen film. Now, going back to the reveal and how it's dull and hollow, it doesn't help when the killer isn't intimidating by any means. Here's what's so frustrating also about the reveal. I'm not sure if the scene was cut or if it never got shot at all, but the killer would have had been off everyone's suspect list if they had kept in one crucial component and they didn't. By eliminating this, it really hurts the narrative and it just feels like the movie is dragging its feet to the inevitable. This also loops back to our supporting cast being weak because Maxine doesn't even give them a chance to be viable suspects. It's obviously one person behind the mask and it's clear who it will be in such an in-your-face fashion that the film's story cannot build any mystery around who it could be or even build any mystery as to you anticipating the reveal itself. I will say the reveal falls flat even more because not even Maxine seems shocked. For my wrestling fans out there, see, she essentially is no selling this moment. Most of the pros in the screenplay come from our exploration of Maxine as a character and her role in the industry. Maxine is haunted by what happened in X. This trauma has her keeping quiet while a new killer offs her colleagues one at a time. She believes the victims should be saving themselves, but fails to recognize that not everyone is as confident as she is. Her self-isolation has caused her to be less empathetic, and it's the most enticing aspect of the story for me. But for every high, there's another low. Maxine was robbed of its greatness, and it can't be more evident when I look at the scares or kills. The most brutal sequence in this film is the alley scene, if you know, you know. But besides that, too much of it is off screen. And Maxine herself comes off way more intimidating than the slasher that's on the loose. For instance, that blindfolded scene had a lot more to offer that was cut. 
Granted, I can appreciate the film letting me imagine the horrors that occurred to those people, but I'm letting you guys know there was a lot more to that instance. The dialogue is fine. I mean, it was a bit preachy at times when it came to how Hollywood will eat you alive if you aren't careful. Still, the exchanges between characters felt like genuine conversations. I just wish that they made better use of the supporting cast so that I could actually feel something for some of these characters, especially considering the connection Maxine has to some of them that would have made me feel something when they inevitably die. But because they were so underutilized, their deaths don't mean anything to me. They just mean something to Mia Goth, who is still doing an amazing job. Don't get me wrong. Now, Mia Goth, like I said, remains an absolute star. She captured the detached but bold nature of Maxine Meeks flawlessly. Our supporting cast are great in their roles, and despite being underutilized, I do think Kevin Bacon gave the strongest performance in the film as the sleazy investigator John Labatt. The arrogance just rolls off him effortlessly because of Bacon's delivery. Ty West's direction here is decent, but Maxine doesn't have a single genuinely scary moment in it. The atmosphere just does not elicit terror or justify me feeling like, Max like Maxine is in any sort of genuine danger. It's a major issue since characters spend time hyping Hollywood and how it can be so intimidating, but yet I was actually wanted to go further into the belly of the beast due to the stunning color palette featured in the film. The color palette can definitely make or break whatever you want to go for, and I think the color palette was beautiful but also doing a disservice to what they needed to accomplish with the film there was nothing in the film that warranted me feeling terrified by any means not anything outside of the alley scene with maxine which solidified her as more of an intimidating threat in the film than the slasher that's on the loose like i stated earlier the pacing can be a bit hit or miss some sequences go on longer than they should certain tracking shots while I, I love those they do go on a little bit longer than i would like them to there was one very stressful tense moment that felt claustrophobic that i desperately wish would have gone on as long as some of the tracking shots did because that didn't really get a lot of time to breathe and really sink in although ty west that still was a well-directed scene i love it for those of you who know what i'm talking about you know what I'm talking about because it was claustrophobic, especially if you're someone who has a fear of stuff like that. Now, the score and the music in the film definitely dug all of that. Costume design and a commitment to the 80s aesthetic, it achieves all of that and does a phenomenal job committing to the era it's trying to pay homage to. I just think that Maxine was robbed of the greatness it could have had, and I will have to give this movie a solid 6.5 out of 10. I still liked it, but it is the weakest in the X saga. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Well, actually, before I even get out of here, let's talk about that post credit scene. So the post credit scene that seemingly wasn't shot would have taken us back to Texas, the home of the Texas Corn Star Massacre. It was at the sheriff's station and we'd see a truck pull up. A man would have stepped out and we follow his boots as he walks into the station. The camera would have panned up to the man taking a seat at his desk that reveals the name to be Sheriff Dentler, who first appeared in X. Now, Officer Mitchell, who also appeared in X, would have asked him how his hunting trip went, and Dentler makes a remark to suggest it didn't go well. Mitchell then says, at least you didn't miss much of anything while you were gone, since nothing exciting ever happens in town. Then Dentler laughs and starts reading the sports section of the newspaper, but on the cover, which we never see him read it, he never reads the cover. On the cover of it, though, it says local girl becomes a star. The star, of course, would have been Maxine and her picture is on the front page. It would have been like a picture of her as a child, apparently. I imagine this was never shot because of the scene being added in could have been interpreted as a final nail in the coffin to the series being done. But with talks of a potential fourth film that could involve Maxine, perhaps it was decided to leave this out. That's just what I am predicting as to why they didn't shoot it but that was the post credit scene we could have gotten let me know again what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications your name is the video in the description i have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video